Hi everyone, Sid here back in the car. So, hashtag Oprah2020. Uh, I, part of me regrets that I didn't uh, have, I didn't film this video yesterday because um, yesterday was a crazy day for me. But the silver lining in that is that I've had the chance to collect my thoughts a little more. I would like to make the case as to why Oprah Winfrey should not run for president. So, in short, my, my case for why she shouldn't run rests on another case. So, to present my argument in a nutshell, the worst possible scenario for Oprah would be for her to run and lose. Uh, I think the opportunity cost in her running for office would be far too great for her, uh, for that cost to be worth it if she lost. And the case that that rests upon is I don't think that Oprah Winfrey could beat Donald Trump. So, like, there, there's kind of two campaigns when you're running for a campaign. There's the primary and there's the general election. I think if she ran, she would be a shoe in for the primary because let's face it, I mean, she's Oprah Winfrey. She built her media empire for a reason. She's very charismatic. I, uh, you know, this might shock you, but my mother is black. And as a black woman, I, I grew up with Oprah. As a black woman, my mom had Oprah Winfrey on, uh, on the TV. So I've, I've had a lot of uh, exposure to Oprah as a little boy. And that was before she, uh, you know, broke out into movie movies and whatnot. Now, the primary she'd be issuing not only because uh, she has that... She has that charisma as far as celebrities are concerned. Uh, she's one of the better uh, choices for a Democrat, let's say. And let's face it, lefties in general, they will never let an opportunity to virtue signal go to waste. And as far as a candidate is concerned, Oprah Winfrey is a gold mine of virtue signaling for lefties. So as far as the primary is concerned, she'd be a shoe in to get the nomination. Now, as far as the general election is concerned, though, I don't think she has what it takes to uh, beat Trump because, and this assumes that Trump's re-election campaign would be in the same style as his campaign. Um, he, he kind of forces his opponents to roll in the mud with him, and I think that that is what was the key to his victory um, last time around because everyone, n no one knew what to do with him. Uh, clearly no one uh, had ever had to uh, deal with a candidate like that. And strangely, I would say that of all the veteran politicians that uh, Trump has defeated in his rise to the uh, Oval Office, I would say that the the person who adapted to his style of campaigning and debating the best is Ted fucking Cruz. Uh, he, that's like, those are like the only two things, uh, the only two positive things I have to say about Ted Cruz. I love the sound of his voice. I'm on record as saying that. Uh, and I, I, I think he has a nice sounding voice, which isn't an argument for anything. And the other thing which I believe I'm also on record for saying is I think that he was the one who demonstrated the best ability to adapt to Trump. Uh, I, I give an honorable mention to Rubio, to little Marco, but the, the problem with Rubio is he, he didn't manage to... His, his way of rolling around in the mud with Trump made him look like a dick. And then Trump just needed to nudge him a little to to make him worse off than had he tried to play the high road like uh, most of the other candidates that uh, that Trump defeated. So as far as because Trump is a troll, uh, he 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 campaigns like a troll. He speaks like a troll, uh, and and I'm not sure if I mean that as a compliment or not. I guess my my love of trolling, which is its own video uh, uh, in the future, uh, is is mixed with my uh, 
hatred for for the state and state institutions. So that's kind of why those two parts of myself are at odds when I consider Donald Trump the troll political candidate and now de facto politician, you know. And as far as having to deal with a troll like that, I don't think that uh, Oprah Winfrey has what it takes to deal with that for months on end as it would require. I'm not sure how long the general election cycle is, uh, but, you know, as basically all of Trump's uh, opponents have demonstrated, uh, taking the high road is not an effective strategy against Trump in a political campaign. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I think that of all the, the footage to study, uh, Ted Cruz during the late primary debates is strangely the best footage that you will find of, of a career politician adapting to Trump. So, so that leads to why would she even run in the first place? Honestly, she, she has nothing to gain. Uh, there's, she has nothing to gain and the opportunity cost of her running and losing is too high. Like, what, what is she going to gain by, by campaigning? Like, exposure? Uh, meeting people? She's Oprah fucking Winfrey. That there's, there's, no. There's nothing in it for her to, to do that. Uh, just like there wasn't anything for Trump, except maybe uh, stroking his ego. Uh, which I'm sure, I'm sure Oprah Winfrey has an ego as well. I mean, you can't reach the top of that mountain uh, without without a level of um, self-interest, let's call it that. Uh, now, I think that the, the way in which people um, look at her in high esteem speaks to her character. Uh, oh, speaking of which, I just want to give this a nod I, um, because I noticed them. The, the, um, the pictures of uh, Oprah with Harvey Weinstein, like, I, I can see, I definitely see the irony in having her basically say hashtag me too for 10 minutes um, and having pictures of her kissing Harvey Weinstein on the cheek. I can see the irony in that. I don't think it follows that, uh, that she's a hypocrite. Uh, I think that with a guy like Weinstein, basically everyone has blood on their hands and dirt in their face with regards to that. I will remind you the appeal that Molyneux um, has said many times, which is of some Oscar ceremony where um, the presenter was, I think it was Seth Rogen, who said uh, to, to present the, the Oscar for Best Actress, uh, and now uh, a list of women who no longer have to pretend to be attracted to Harvey Weinstein, and everyone laughed. That, that kind of hints at how everyone's heard things. And I have no doubt that Oprah Winfrey's heard things. Um, but, you know, it's kind of like if everyone's guilty, no one's guilty. Uh, I, I don't think that... I don't think you can score points by showing anyone in uh, Hollywood in a picture with Harvey Weinstein. Uh, unfortunately, I think it's the industry as a whole who, um, who deserves blame for lack of a better word but anyway um that that was just an aside because the pictures of her um you know that i saw on tuesday i they, they popped into my mind just now so long story short she has nothing to gain um from doing this the opportunity cost is far too high for her to run and lose uh if she run and wins obviously you know then you know i i don't know what her policies would be like but um you could do worse than Oprah Winfrey. Um, yeah, so in conclusion, Oprah, I know you're watching. Don't run for office. Focus on your podcast. If you want to get into political commentary and political action, start another one if you want. Um, I think that you have done far more good already uh, than you would by running for office, even for eight years uh, as a president. And I would, I would make the same case for Donald Trump, too, as well. Uh, but I get how the, the climate that he was running in uh, contributes to why 
he was such an attractive option uh, to people. So yeah, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please leave your comments below. I'm, I'm curious to know what your thoughts are, what you, uh, what you think of what I've had to say. Uh, you will find links to my uh, social media and crypto, tool uh, crypto tip jars below. And uh, please subscribe to me on my YouTube channel if you haven't already. If you're watching this on BitChute, please subscribe to me there. And uh, yeah, I will see you very soon. Later.